friends, it's Christy. Welcome to day 14 of my 2018 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using some neat and tangled stamp sets. I'm using Oh Dear, Santa's Wonderland, Berry Mary, and Get Yeti. I've stamped my images out on some Copic friendly cardstock with Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers today. I'm starting with my deer, and for him I'm using E51, E53, and E55. I'm using the E55 first to lay in my shadows, and I'm just concentrating on his head for right now since he is a larger image. So then I'm going to come in with the E53 and blend out that E55, just softening up the edge and pulling out that color. And then I'm going to finish up the rest of his face on the tips of his ears with that E51. These little reindeer are just so darling and they're actually not even a Christmas set. It's really an everyday set, but I think it's so cool that you're able to combine so many different of the neat and tangled images and have them really work well together. So now I'm continuing with the rest of my reindeer's body, laying in some shadows on the backs of each of the legs. I also put a little bit of shadow on his tail since it's on the opposite side of his body and a little bit where his head would cast a shadow on his back. And then I'm blending out with the E53 once again. I wanted the area around his belly to be the lightest, so I'm pulling that color down with the E51, and then I realized that I really needed a softer shade. I also added a little E51 to the forehead and the inside of the ears. So I'm gonna grab the E50 and bring that in as well, and then I'm going to soften that up with the colorless blender so it's not too dark. I'm also going to use that E50 to color in the chest area and the tail just to give it a little bit of a color there and then again with the colorless blender to soften it up. For his antlers and his hooves, I'm using E57 and E59. I started with the E59 and once again I'm shading on the left hand side, the back side of his body and then I will pull that color forward with the E57. I decided just to use two shades on those areas since they're so small. For the penguin, I'm using C5, C7, and C9, and I'm starting with the C9 and laying in some shadows, doing like that little corner where his neck meets the rest of his body, also a little bit down at the lower Part of his body near his feet and also to separate where his flippers are since they are, would be set a little bit back on his body so you would have a little bit of shadow there as well. Then I'm going to pull that color out with the C7. So he's going to look like a black penguin but um, he's just going to have a little bit more dimension than if you would just color him with a flat black shade. So I'm using the C5 to pull everything together and then I decided that on the very top of his head I wanted just a little bit of a lighter highlight so I added in the C3. I wanted to add a little bit of dimension to the white parts of his body as well so I'm using the C0 and C1 and I just flicked in a little shadow from his neck towards his face and down towards his belly and then a little bit more at the bottom and then blended that with the C0 and then brought in the colorless blender once again to soften that up. And while I had those markers out, I went ahead and colored in the white stripes on my North Pole sign. I wanted it to look kind of like peppermint, so I just did every other one. And then for the penguin's beak and feet, and also for the cardinal's beak, I'm using YR04 and YR07. Speaking of the cardinal, I forgot to color in his face when I was doing the penguin, so I'll just go back. I'm using C3, C5, and C7. I used the C7 first to just add a little bit of shadow on the right side of his body since he's facing toward the left. And then I'm blending towards the front with the C5 and then the C3. 
I'm using my favorite red combo for the North Pole sign and the Cardinal. So it's R29, R39, and R59. I'm using the R59 to lay in some shadow on the right hand side, the upper right corner actually, and then pulling towards the lower left with the R39, and then I'll fill in the rest with the R29. And I'm shading this on the right hand side because I know that I already want it on the right hand side of my card. So I'm kind of just doing it as the scene progresses. And then I'm also going to use those shades to color in the cardinal, like I mentioned. I already know that that is also going on the right hand side, so I'm shading in that direction um, as well. So it will be a center light source. I use the R29 to color in the deer's tongue, and then I'm using the R20 to color in his ears and the rest of his mouth. And while I have that out, I'm also going to use it to give all of the animals some rosy cheeks. I did attempt it on the cardinal as well, but it didn't really show up that well on the darker color. On the wood part of the North Pole sign, I'm going to use E43, E44, and E47. I'm starting with the E47 and shading on the lower part and then a little bit up the sides and then blending up with the E44. I want to be careful here not to make it too dark so that you can't read the sign. So I'm going to save the majority for that E43. So it'll just have a little bit of depth at the very edges. I decided to make my mountains warm gray toned. I didn't really want to introduce another color into the palette, but I also didn't want to use the same cool tones that I used on the penguin and the cardinal. So I decided to switch to the warm grays because they kind of resemble stone to me anyway. So I'm using W1, W3, and W5. And I'm just shading from the right to the left. So I added the shadow down the right hand side. I'm blending towards the center with the W3. And then I'll finish up on the left with the W1. For the snow, I'm using BG10 and BG11. And I'm just doing some really quick little flicks in here because I don't want it to be too much. I just want it to have a frosty look. So I started with the BG11 and then quickly blended out with the BG10 and then once again I'll bring in my colorless blender to soften that up. And then I'll just trim these out with the matching dies. I'm using some pattern paper from the My Mind's Eye Winterberry 6x6 to create my scene. So before I put that together I'm going to take some Lawn Fawn Chili Pepper ink and stamp down my sentiment. And I did stamp that down multiple times since it absorbs a little bit differently into pattern paper than cardstock. And then while I have my Misty out, I'm also going to stamp on the inside of my card. And this time I'm just using Memento Tuxedo Black ink uh, because I want it to really stand out against that dark red cardstock. So the pattern paper that I'm using for my background was actually one piece but I cut it into two because I wanted to have a snow drift that I could tuck my mountains behind. So I'm gluing the top piece onto a piece of white cardstock, then I die cut all of these with the neat and tangled scallop dies, and then I can adhere my snow drift right over top. And I'm just making sure that that's lined up nice and straight with all those little edges. And then I'll grab my little mountain scene and tuck that into the snowdrift, like I mentioned. And then I can set my images all around that. So I'm going to add the reindeer on the left. And I want to make sure that he's not covering up any of that sentiment. So I'm just adjusting him a little bit. That's why I like to use the liquid glue so you have a little bit of wiggle room. The North Pole sign is going to go over on the right hand side. And then I have the penguin, which is going to go in the center right above that sentiment. And then all that's left is my little cardinal that will go on the bottom right. And I accidentally knocked my penguin askew, so I'm just going to straighten him up and then set this whole panel aside to dry. 
The rest of my pattern papers, I'm going to adhere to the card. And I love the scene that's on the back side, but luckily there is two of every pattern in this uh, set so that you can use the other side on a different card. Um, so I screwed down the black snowflake print over the entire card front. And then I've got this red and white snowflake print that I'm going to run down the center from top to bottom. I've added some Scotch 3M foam tape to the back of my focal panel, so I'll peel off the release papers and then line that up nice and straight in the center of the card. And I just used my grid mat to make sure that I had that just right. And then to finish off the card, I'm going to take my favorite crystal stickles and add a little bit of glitter to the snow on the North Pole sign and also to the snow on the mountains. And then I'll dot a little bit into the center of each of the snowflakes that are in the background pattern paper. So whatever ones I can see the center of, I'm just going to add a quick dab of glue. And I'm going to turn my card to make sure that I don't smear it. And um, that is going to complete our card for today. So I'll lift that up to the camera so you can see that sparkle and shine. And give you another peek at the inside. So I hope you guys have enjoyed day 14 of my 2018 holiday card series. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm really hoping to hit 20,000 subscribers by the end of 2018 and I'm about a thousand away. So I would love your support. You can also click the notification bell if you want to be sure that my videos always end up in your feed. If you'd like to keep watching, here's two videos from the previous two years of holiday card series. So thank you guys so much again and have an amazing day. Bye bye.